In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. The word, the name, Jesus the Christ. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. The message of the Gospel is simple. God sent his son into the world to die for the sins of the world. That whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, should not perish but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son of God has life. He that believeth not on God's Son have not life for he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god there is a condemnation which is in the world this condemnation exists because god gave his unique son jesus christ he came into the world to shed light into the hearts of men but men choose rather to live in darkness than accepting the light of God, Jesus Christ. So the question is, are you willing to spend eternity separated from love? Are you willing to consciously choose eternal darkness over the gift of God which he offered in his son Jesus Christ? It is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. However, that choice is up to the individual. God has already done everything that he will do as it pertains to our salvation. Now it's up to us to make that conscious choice for him or against him. Someone might say, I don't believe in God. And the Bible, it was written by men. This is an argument that is popular among those who think by their unbelief, they can cause God to just go away. How foolish. Romans chapter 3 verses 3 and 4. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the fate of God without effect? God forbid. Yes, let God be true, but every man a liar, that it might be written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. Your unbelief will not change the fact of who God is, but it will seal your eternal destiny. Whether to spend it in the presence of God 
or to be eternally lost. I love you, Yeshua. I love the name. Trusting in your unbelief is a recipe for disaster. Everyone is under the curse of Adam and the penalty for such violation of God's law is eternal separation from him. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, the first thing God did was to exercise his grace. God accepted a substitutionary life for theirs. It was one animal sacrifice that temporarily covers the sins of them both. Even though Eve sinned, God accredited the responsibility mostly to Adam. Eve was taken from the side of Adam. So woman came from man and man from woman. They are intricately linked. In the New Testament, we read that in Adam all died. Now in Christ, all shall be made alive. True, one man, Adam, sin affected all. One bloodline, even so in Jesus Christ, shall all be affected by the blood of God himself. There is only one that is perfect, and that is God. So when God demanded a perfect sacrifice, we are told that God would provide himself that sacrifice. Because of our sins, God became man, that he might die to redeem us from the penalty we justly deserve. You step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me Heart adore you, hope of life's been with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow, here I am to say that you're my God. All together, love, all together. So who was Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was God manifested in human form. For his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. These are titles given to the Son, the Promised Son, who was Jesus Christ. Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Each title revealed the true nature of this son. The Hebrew name always revealed the character of the one who bears that name. In these names, it is unmistakable referring to someone that is more than a created being. You can call someone wonderful. You can call someone a counselor. But 
the names get more heavenly and less earthly. Can you call someone, even an angel, mighty God? Can you call someone everlasting father or prince of peace? While you might try to explain the first two away, how would you explain the next three? It is clear. Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel. Yeshua is God in the flesh. Upon the cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins. Upon the cross Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God All together Jesus was not an angel All together He did not come and reveal himself as a good man or a wonderful prophet Acts 20 verse 28 Take heed therefore unto yourselves Paul told the bishops and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers listen to feed the church of God which God had purchased with his own blood God purchased with his own blood? When was that? To the believer, we will say, on the cross. To the unbeliever, what is your answer? God came and died. He died and he paid with his blood. The perfect lamb perfect sacrifice for our Your reconciliation. Someday walk in the water May we did you know Your baby boy Would save our sons and daughters Did you know Come to make you new This child that you delivered Soon deliver you Mary did you know Your baby boy Would give sight To a blind man Mary did you know Your baby boy Would calm the storm with his hand Did you know Your baby boy Has walked to your angels trough When you kissed your lips Baby, you've kissed the face of God. Very did you know. Notice who shed his blood. It was God. The Greek word used here is tears. Not Christus, which means Christ, or curious, which means Lord. When we speak of the God man, it is the reference or in reference to God who chose to become a man like us. Why? Because God 
cannot die as God. And even if he could, it would not benefit us because deity did not sin against God. Man did. Therefore, it needed a man to redeem man. So God became a man to do for us what we could not possibly do for ourselves. The word was made flesh and dwell among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and of truth jesus christ was not a wonderful man he was god who lived among us and died as a man for our sins the love of god manifested jesus christ for no other reason but to reconcile us fallen men to God himself the mystery of the Christ in his birth Isaiah 7 14 therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel Emmanuel three Hebrew words with us is God this verse gives clear evidence that this son is not a natural son why because this pregnant virgin gave birth to a son and yet she remained a virgin meaning that the birth was supernatural if she was still a virgin after giving birth, it simply means that no man was involved with the birth. Matthew 1, 19-23 Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. This is the good news of the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. This son is the one prophesied in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This son was prophesied to die because of sin. But who sinned? Isaiah 53 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Adonai, 
ours is mentioned three times. We mention once. It never mentioned anything about him dying for his own sin. This son would become the accepted substitution for sin. Why did he have to die? Without the shedding of blood, there is no removal of sin. When I see the blood, God said, I will pass over you. The judgment of God passes over us when we have the blood applied to our heart. The sacrifice for sin must be perfect. Only God is perfect, so only Him could die for our sins. For He made Him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 What am I expected to do in light of what God has done on my behalf? You must be born again. Every man was born to be born again. If you are not born twice, you are not a candidate for heaven. If you are born a second time, you have passed from eternal death into eternal life. How can I be born again? Jesus answered that question for you. John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, he must be born again. You cannot work yourself into the kingdom. You must be born into it. Romans chapter 10, 9 through 13. That if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead thou shall be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scriptures say whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a promise from God who cannot lie. Do you want salvation? Yeshua is here. He is your salvation. It is finished. The price is paid. Will you accept Jesus Yeshua as your Lord? This is the gospel that is able to save. Anyone who believe in Yeshua Jesus Christ have life. 
He that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. So here is life. That you should believe in God the Father and Jesus Christ whom he sent. He was wounded for my transgression. Yes, he was wounded for my transgression. his hands would 